What's up everybody, Curtis here, and welcome back to Digibit Tech. Now, I was cleaning out the garage a little bit, going through some of the spare hardware I had laying around, and I came across this. Now, you've probably seen this sitting right there in a lot of the background of my different videos. Uh, this right here is kind of a unique board. This is a EVGA 790i Ultra SLI motherboard. It's a socket 775 motherboard, so core two quad series. And as you could probably see, it's got water blocks instead of regular heat sinks. I actually purchased this in an entire water cooled system. Um, I bought it just for the water cooling equipment. This board's kind of dated. You're not going to play like modern titles at 4K on this system. Uh, but I did get two sets of radiators, a pump, a reservoir, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so that alone was worth the purchase. However, I noticed that this board did not boot. Uh, I couldn't even get it in a BIOS or anything. Um, and as I was cleaning everything, I thought, huh, I should try to get this board to work because this board came out right around when I really got into PC gaming and I think it'd be pretty cool to do a uh, ultimate like 2008 water cooled build. So uh, yeah, if you want to see that, be sure to sound off in the comments. But enough with the jibber jabber, let me show you some of the tricks that I use when I try to troubleshoot motherboards and yeah, come along for the journey. Let's get to it. Now, since I'm a one man crew, um, this is just how I'm gonna have to do it and when there's something intricate I want to show you I'm gonna have to pull the camera off the tripod and physically hold the camera so this isn't gonna be the best quality video but hopefully you'll be able to learn something from it so the first thing I need to do is get power hooked up to the board um, second this motherboard doesn't have dedicated video out on it so I have to put in a tested known good video card then I need to find a CPU cooler and just kind of stick it down on there it doesn't have to be perfect all we're doing is just trying to get this thing to boot so time-lapse engage Okay, now before I hook up power, generally the first thing I do is check capacitors and check for burned or hot spots on the motherboard. I don't see any hot spots on the motherboard, and after looking at all the capacitors, I can see that none of them are swollen and none of them are leaking, uh, which generally means that they are good. So now that we're good on that, I got one stick of memory in, I got the CPU fan and the GPU all hooked up, plugged in, ready to go. Now I just need to see if we're going to luck out and this thing start up. So I have a start power LED on the motherboard. It's telling me that the motherboard is getting power. So I know we're good there. So. We'll try to start and mash delete and see if we can get in the UEFI. Okay, we're getting a bunch of different postcodes here. Uh, whoa, that's never happened. Well then. <laughs> um... I, I'm kind of dumbfounded. I, I, I don't understand. I was using different memory, so I think what I'm going to turn this into is if the motherboard doesn't work, what to do to check it. So let me put the old memory back in and we'll go from there. <laughs> Say the motherboard didn't work. I don't know why it just suddenly decided to start working, but whatever. So the first thing I would check 
is make sure that your PCI cards and your memory are both inserted and locked in and ready to go. Um, if it's a little off kilter, didn't need that screwdriver. If it's a little off kilter and not seated properly, it will cause it to not boot. Also, I would undo the cooler, pull out the CPU, and just reinsert it. You don't have to push down, it's zero insertion. So you just place it and then relatch it. Um, sometimes a little bit of the elements might cause like some, not corrosion, but just oxidation on the pins or on the little pads of the CPU. I would take alcohol with a lint-free cloth and just clean that off if that's the case. Reinsert it, test it. So if it didn't boot up and you know you put in known good memory and a known good video card, um, the next step I would try is cleaning, which I'll show you real quick. So like I stated in my cleaning video, which if you haven't seen that, I'll put a card right about here. You want to grab your can of dust, canned dusting air, whatever you call it, and just blow all of the big chunks of dust off of the motherboard. If you have enough dust collection, it actually can become conductive and short out the motherboard and cause it not to boot. So. Give it a good clean. Now you don't want to spray directly into the slots because if this stuff like sprays out that mist, it could cause some moisture to be in there. So you always want to spray like kind of across them. Now, with that being done, the next thing I would recommend is grabbing a clean toothbrush. Now don't brush your teeth and then do this, the toothpaste will actually collect on the motherboard and be gross. So then you just want to take your toothbrush and just kind of run it across the PCB here. All right, then you want to go back with your air. And just touch up any fine little areas you might have missed. Now, what you want to do is go ahead, rehook everything. Make sure that you didn't spray any moisture in here. If you did, just wait a few minutes, let it dry out. Then plug everything back and retest. If you fail to boot again, the next thing I would recommend is finding your clear CMOS button, or in the case of this old board, your CMOS jumper which basically what I do, I just jump it over, turn on the motherboard, wait a few seconds, turn it off, and then put the jumper back to the way it was. Go ahead and retest after doing that. If you still, still don't get a boot, then I would say that your problem is either BIOS related or in the CPU. So what I'm going to do is flip this board around and show you the CPU side of things. So you want to loosen the retention bracket, pull this back. Now on 775 there is, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bare space here and a bare space here. So basically you just take the sides of the CPU and pick it up. What you want to look for is all of these little bitty pins in here. You want to make sure none of them are bent. If one of them's bent, don't fear. You can take, I recommend a fine toothpick and just kind of bend it back in place, being careful not to damage any of the other pins. I never just store motherboards with open pin arrays. I either put the CPU back or it reinstall the cover that comes with the motherboard and that should take care of installing the CPU and checking the bottom. This is actually a Core 2 Duo that I had laying around. I was ready to test the system, make sure that the CPU wasn't the issue. Um, if you know a CPU is good and you put it in the motherboard and it still doesn't work, 
then in this unique case, I would actually remove this water block along with these and make sure that there was no metal to PCB contact. They, there are little like nylon gaskets that go between the block and the PCB to prevent shorting. Same thing on the rear, uh, as you can see there. Now after taking it apart, reinstalling everything, I would then retest. Okay, so you've done all the testing that I've told you how to do. You've swapped parts, you've cleaned, you've double checked heat sinks, things like that. It is finally time for the moment of truth. So flip on your power and hit those power buttons. Now we know this motherboard boots up, um, but in your case where yours may not, Honestly, I would call this the final step. If it doesn't boot up at this point, then I'd say you probably have a dead motherboard on your hands because we've tried known good CPUs, known good memory, known good video cards. That's why I keep a lot of the hardware that I purchase over the years um, just so I can test things later down the road. Uh, I don't know how many times that saved my bacon. Super happy this motherboard works. I'm really excited about this project. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Lots of water cooling involved. And uh, that's always a good time. So, with that being said, I know this is kind of a different video. It's not normally the format that I follow. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Once I hit 100 subs, I am going to be launching a US only giveaway. You're not going to want to miss it. Also, don't forget to like the video if you liked what you saw. If you disliked it, there's a button down there for that as well. Be sure to hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you've ever rocked this motherboard before or how you fix your dead equipment. Also, don't forget to hit me up on social media. I will put the tag right at the bottom here. Also, don't forget about the weekly live stream, Player Tuesday. This happens every Tuesday at 6.30 Eastern Time. Uh, me and my buddy John get on, just talk about stuff we enjoy, video games, movies, whatever, and just have a beer and have a good time. So we would love to have you. Now, with that being said, I'm going to... Uh, play around with my newly working motherboard. So I'll see you all in the next video. See ya.